Hello everyone. For some weird reason my OPS is showing a white screen on the browser capture. This has not been a problem for literally every recording I've done on this channel. I've done my best to try and remedy the situation using uh, Google and things of that nature, but any of the fixes that I've seen online aren't fixing it. So I'm going to have to do screen capture. Apologies for having a OBS in the middle of the uh, screen at certain times. Okay, let's talk um, the Borderlands 3 uh, mayhem difficulty and other things. Now, this article seems to be the more well-written one. It explains things better. So, for short version, there's going to be basically mayhem and the equivalent of a true vault hunter mode. The thing that we need to take from this is the portion at PAX. When this was all announced at PAX, they did say that basically there is a chance for uh, the enemy to be immune to an element. So this means they could be immune to fire or they could be immune to acid. If it's going to be fire or cryo, then that's a problem because any of the builds that I did prior do have some element of that. We're going to go and talk about the builds yet again, and we're going to touch up on some things that have been said in the comments. Now, like I've said, it's nice when people share with me within reason. One of the comments was saying that they got like some super pros and pro people to like do this build and stuff and I just took one look at it and was like you're banking all of your Zane passives on uh, cryo damage and this is a prime example of why I say to do versatile builds if it's one thing that games have taught me in the many years is generally speaking specific builds will always struggle the most that's because they're designed to do one thing and one thing only the second you get a, a monster or enemy that's immune to that is the second that build is going to struggle. That's why the original Moz uh, build and Zane builds that I showed you are built in that way. They are meant to handle any kind of situation within reason. So let's go ahead and look over the builds real quickly again. I will admit that I ran out of time trying to fix OBS and from that I didn't have enough time to relook at what I did for my builds, but I do remember within reason certain things. So um, let's go and look at the Moz build uh, first. Now with the Moz build, I built it in such a way that I came over to uh, stainless steel bear um, and some points here, uh, bottomless mags being mostly full, and then I also came over here. Now this build is versatile in the fact that it does have points to make the uh, Iron Bear more valuable. The biggest problem with Moz in comparison to the other ones is her Iron Bear mech has an atrocious cooldown rate and a very, very low duration. The only way that you're really going to be able to get around that problem is if you actually invest into the Iron Bear mech. That's why I was saying in the recording with the Moz infantry build that I disagree with it because it's a one-trick build. I don't think it's going to survive all that well. And now that Mayhem Mode and this other stuff has been mentioned, it further reinforces why I think it's not going to last. Moz needs to transition from infantry to mech in order to survive in most battles. That's just how Moz works. So when you don't invest into her mech, you're taking away from your survivability, is what it boils down to. So here's the build again, and you can see that um, this is what I did, so it's pretty straightforward. But um, yeah, let's go ahead and move on uh, to um, talking about um, Zane now. So now that you kind of understand why there's such a need for a versatile build, let's go and relook at Zane's as well. When I originally did Zane, I came down here to Calm Cool Collected. It's a nice skill, but if there's going to be cryo immune mobs, then 
I'm not really sure how much value that that's going to get. The only reason that I would say that this build will still function is because of the other defensive um, skills. Because as you come down here, you build up a lot of defensive uh, skills. So even if that gets canceled out, you still have all the other stuff. So this build is perfectly fine. Um, this is the one where I went here and here. Now, I will point out one change I made to this build just to make sure that you all understand this. There are a lot of people who don't like true defensive builds, like can actually take a hit. I can respect that. So if you're going to use my build and you don't like the fact that I put 5 into Salvation and you're looking for more gun damage, then you can put it up to Violent Momentum and that should hopefully cancel out all if not some of the barriers uh, damage reduction when you pick it up. But again, you're going to want to try to make sure that the Zane is stationary. Because when Zane is stationary, this will give you the most bonuses. So uh, yeah, keep that in mind when you make the decision of switching Salvation to Violent Momentum. Another thing you can do to this build to kind of switch around um, is this build over here. You'll notice in this build I didn't go as nearly far down the tree. I only have a few points there, one there, one here. It's just enough to get me down retaliation. This is a even more def uh, offensive build than defensive build um, in comparison to the other one that I originally did. You'll notice the same thing going on here, but the other change is right here. I actually went with uh, synchronicity and two points in Donnybrook. This is, um, again, meant to help you cancel out um, most, if not all, the damage penalties from Barrier when you pick it up. In this scenario, you actually do have more gun damage than the original build. You just won't have a um, really expensive jacket or um, futility belt or a stiff upper lip. That's that's really the core of what is missing because like I said it's not a huge deal if Calm Cool Collected gets sh cancelled out but um, you are missing out on at least the defensive stuff so there you go that's how I would change um, the, my original Zane build uh, to fit more of an offensive play style and to kind of change things around for Zane when I created the weapon priority recording, my theories were based on this build and this build over here. So if you change the build to this, then Zane can actually make more use of Jacobs than the other build, which would increase his versatility when it comes to mayhem and the other crap going on. But yeah, kind of keep that in mind as you um, consider these builds. Now. I want to end this theory discussion by talking about um, Zane's skills. A lot of people are, are saying that Digiclone is going to be the absolute best for Zane. I disagree with this, for a very good reason. Granted, Digiclone is pretty strong, but look at all the stuff that you have to do or reach to actually maximize it, right? You're going to be looking at... Uh, Fractal Frags, you're going to be looking at Old U, you're going to be looking at Pocket Full of Grenades, uh, Boom Enhance, and things like that. Boom Enhance um, consumes grenades to essentially buff up the uh, Digiclone. So that's why Pocket Full of Grenades is kind of necessary, so you at least have some way of getting your grenades back a little bit more effectively to a point where you can make use of this all the time. So you're already going to be at the very bottom of the tree just to make uh, Digiclone work. And even then, um, you know, you would need uh, which one's real and some of this other stuff to uh, kind of further help with that. If you look at um, SNTNL in comparison, it does not have that much to it. 
if you can reach drone delivery, ST STNL is going to be mostly fine. Now, of course, you're going to want Boomsday and Bad Dose, but at the very least, look at how much of an investment you need just to make sure that this is getting a little bit more damage. It's literally right here, second tier. It's not this crap going on. The other thing, too, to keep in mind is that SNTNL moves around. The Digitate clone does not. So if there's a enemy that you're trying to chase down or something, uh, the SNTNL will do that for you. Digiclone won't. Also, you can't rely on Digiclone for a defensive scenario in comparison to the shield. The shield will be Zane's best defense skill. And it's true that there are probably going to be enemies that don't use uh, weapons that the bearer can block. But the amount of times that uh, you'll be using barrier are going to be enough to where it compensates for that. The bonus is too compensated for it uh, quite well as well. I mean, if you even look at just some of these bonuses, you're looking at shield recharge delay, reload speed, um, and let's just say you could make a battering ram out of this, assuming that the enemies aren't um, immune to stagger. If the, immune, if the enemies aren't immune to stagger, um, you can make a battering ram out of, out of Zane. This will give you a much easier time dealing with uh, Neely than uh, this will. Digicon. But yeah, I'm going to end the recording there. I just wanted to kind of share my thoughts and theories uh, as to the differences and things to kind of help you with Borderlands 3 once it releases on the 13th. But uh, yeah, thanks for listening.